Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel 73rd edition and second year of the Space and Tech Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of November 1st through November 7th in space exploration, science, and technology. November 1st, 1952. The first United States test of a thermonuclear device, a hydrogen bomb dubbed Ivy Mike, was exploded at the Eniwetok Atoll in the Pacific, 3,000 miles west of Hawaii on this date. It exploded with a blinding white fireball more than three miles across, completely obliterating Elujalab Island, leaving an underwater crater 6,240 feet wide and 164 deep in the lagoon. Ivy Mike was the eighth of 43 nuclear tests at the Inuitak Atoll, and at 10.4 megatons was by far the largest. 80 million tons of soil were lifted into the air by the blast. The yield was a thousand times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima, a blast greater than all the explosives used in World War II. The mushroom cloud rose to top out in five minutes at 135,000 feet, the top of the stratosphere, and eventually spread to 1,000 miles wide. Around a dozen B-17 Flying Fortress drones were flown through the radioactive cloud to test onboard samples. B-17 motherships controlled the drones while flying within visual distance of them. Inuitak Atoll was decontaminated in 1977, and the southern half of the atoll was cleared for human habitation in 1980, with the majority of the remainder expected to be cleared by 2027. November 2nd, 1959. Although the Air Force was assigned as the sole military branch responsible for space, the U.S. Army had managed to hold on to rocket development for ordnance under 1,000 miles in range as part of the Separation of Services Agreement. As a result, Werner von Braun and his team at the Army Ballistic Missile Agency's Redstone Arsenal still soldiered on behind the scenes. That came to an end on this date when President Eisenhower transferred the Saturn rocket program from the Army to NASA. The decision would prove to be historic. The Saturn I rocket became the vehicle that would lift Apollo astronauts to Earth orbit, and its larger brother, the Saturn V, became the vehicle that lifted Apollo astronauts to the moon. Neither the U.S. Army nor the U.S. Air Force has reached the moon at the time of this video, nor has the commercial space industry in spite of their significant accomplishments. The last Saturn rocket flew in 1975. November 3rd, 1957. Sputnik 2 was lifted to orbit by an AK-71 rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome's Launch Complex 1 on this date. The spacecraft carried the dog Laika in order to study the physical processes and conditions of life in outer space. The Soviet Union revealed, after the launch, that the Sputnik 2 would remain in orbit and that the dog only had enough food and oxygen for 10 days. The satellite remained in orbit 162 days and burned up in re-entry. 45 years later, it was revealed that Laika actually only lasted 6 hours after launch. Once in orbit, the dog had overheated inside her cocoon, panicked, and died. It was three years before the Soviets launched another animal into space. This was on the Karabal Sputnik 2 spacecraft on August 19th of 1960. Two dogs were lifted to orbit for one day. One of the dogs suffered from seizures in the weightless environment, but both returned safely to Earth. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to tech documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. Gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Belated Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Reviews of tools and equipment hail from the Tool Crib. And reviews of small electronics and appliances arrive by way of the Radio Shed. Looking for a specific video on our channel that we may have mentioned in one of our other videos? Links to those episodes can be found in the description section below. Also, we have begun labeling our video titles with numbers, such as M105 for Milestones 105 or 
S49 for short 49, so viewers can perform a title search. Finally, you can peruse our entire 300 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. November 4th, 1939, the first air-conditioned automobile was exhibited by its manufacturer, Packard Motor Company of Detroit, Michigan, on this date. The public exhibition at the 40th Automobile Show in Chicago, Illinois, ran between November 4th and November 12th. Air in the car was cooled, dehumidified, filtered, and circulated, and heat was provided for use in the winter. The refrigerating coils were located behind the rear seat in an air duct, with heating coils in another compartment of the same duct. The capacity of the unit was equivalent to 1.5 tons of ice in 24 hours, when the car was driven at 60 miles an hour. The prototype was somewhat impractical. The huge evaporator left little room for luggage in the trunk, and the only way to shut off the air conditioning unit was to stop, raise the hood, and remove the compressor belt. Cadillac followed with its own design in 1941. November 5th, 1963. Archaeologists found Viking ruins in Lance O' Meadows at the extreme northern tip of Newfoundland, predating Columbus by 500 years on this date. Leif Erikson, Icelandic explorer, second son of Eric the Red, is believed by most historians to have been the first European to reach the North American mainland. About the year 1000, he landed at a place he called Vinland. The beer discovery identified Newfoundland as Vinland and as the location of Ericsson's landing. In recent years, the discovery and colonization by Europeans of the Western Hemisphere and the subsequent displacement of natives, fashionably referred to as indigenous peoples, has become a cause celebre by activists seeking to erase European history and culture with the goal of filling the vacuum with political screed or alternative histories. The reality of American demographic change is quite a bit harsher. The Native American peoples are generally believed by anthropologists to have discovered and colonized the two continents over the Bering Strait land bridge between 11,000 and 14,000 years prior to Erickson's landing. However, recent archaeological finds, such as that at the Cerruti Mastodon site in April of 2017, have found that those Asian colonizers themselves displaced indigenous peoples, perhaps even hominins not in the Homo sapiens evolutionary tree, already in North and South America. The implications are that the lands of the Western Hemisphere, just like those in the Eastern, have been subject to many waves of colonization and displacement. Have you agreed with our choices, or do you think there are other events in space and tech history that are better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. If you have suggestions for a space and tech milestone, let us know. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not taken the opportunity to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. November 6, 1899. On this date, James Packard and his brother, William Packard, had finished building a car of their own design and gave it a road test on the streets of Warren, Ohio on this date. As a mechanical engineer, he was dissatisfied with the Winton car he had just bought and gave his criticisms to the manufacturer. It is said that Alexander Winton gave him a curt reply suggesting that he build his own if he thought he could do better. It took 14 months for the Packard brothers, with two men hired from Winton, to produce what became known as the Packard Model A. It had high wire wheels, was steered by a tiller rather than a wheel, and was powered by a single cylinder engine under the seat. Packard had invented the automatic spark advance as an improvement. He sold the car for $1,250 and thus began in business. The Packard Corporation built cars for 56 years before being bought and dismantled by the Studebaker Corporation, which itself stopped making and selling cars 
in 1966. November 7, 1946, the first U.S. coin-operated television to be publicly exhibited was displayed in New York City on this date. It operated when a 25-cent coin was inserted. The receiver, named the Tradiovision, contained 20 vacuum tubes and a 5-inch cathode ray tube that reflected a 500-line image on a mirror on the lid of its metal cabinet. The manufacturer was Tradio Inc. of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Those of you that are watching with some disbelief that there was ever such a thing as a coin-operated TV, rest assured it existed. In fact, it existed until 1967, when the International Telemeter Corporation, which sold exclusively coin-operated televisions, went out of business. The coin-operated television business is considered to be the precursor to the cable television business, which still exists in various forms as of the date of this video. On October 20th, 2021, Blue Origin announced that it was in Blue Origin announced that it was in talks with the US Transportation Command to explore rocket delivered military cargo. The command, which oversees global military logistics operations, signed in 2020 a cooperative research and development agreement with SpaceX and the Exploration Architecture Corporation to study what it would take to integrate space rockets into the military transportation network. Blue Origin would use the New Glenn rocket, which is still in development. The concept is decades away from deployment. Fundamental tasks such as how to package cargo, how to move the cargo to the launch site, how a payload lands in an unimproved area with no infrastructure, and how cargo is unloaded and distributed all have to be worked out. And launching cargo rockets on demand also requires some new thinking. In the space industry, it often takes two years from when a customer says they want to get something into space to when it actually launches. We covered SpaceX's talks with the U.S. Military Airlift Command in Milestones 122. We hope you enjoyed this 73rd episode of Bladed Tech Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe or just stay in touch by following us on our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. We announce all new videos on those outlets. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed, and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.